everyone to the LEC where it's time for Rogue versus SK Gaming. There was a lot of hype around the Rogue lineup so far, and uh, well, they have delivered two games one, one versus Fnatic, one versus XL on the first day, undefeated so far, and really delivering on what people had expected preseason. Yeah, I mean, someone put them in S tier coming into the season. Apparently that person is super smart and deserves all the credit. It's this man <laughs> right here. Um, I think a lot of us saw the Rogue lineup, saw the changes, the upgrades uh, they made, at least with adding in Odo Hamne, and we're like, okay, they're clearly going to be at least as good as last split, which was, by the way, enough to be number one in the regular season. True, not bad. Or they're going to get even better by adding in someone like Odo. And of course, Trimmy was the question mark, but we know he's mechanically good enough to match up with the other supports in the league. Yeah, and it's just crazy to see how fast they've slotted in, right? Two changes and they're still like looking like the best team in league almost. I think their gameplay is clinical. And I think if you look at the play styles across the teams, some teams are trying team fights, some teams are trying like winning lanes, counter picks, picks, all this stuff, but they're just going for globals or whatever they want to do. And I think if you give Rogue playmaking, especially in mid jungle, you've already made a huge mistake. Like TF Pantheon on the best mid jungle <laughs> in the league. It's like, well, you're going to get dove on your side lanes 100%. The best mid jungle in the league. All right, there we go. Yeah, then inspired in Larson. Uh, let's first start with that top lane change. Maybe we've talked about him a ton already, but I also think it's deserved and it's a big story and very important for that team. Oduwamna, Oduwamna rather in the top lane, bring both the experience and a wealth of playstyles that he can bring into that team. I often hear maybe, mm -hmm. oh, he's a tank player or this and that. That is not true. Odoame is a very versatile player who can, I think, deliver this team what exactly they needed coming into the split. I mean, he's been a very versatile player for years. Yeah. He's just not, not always had the greatest teams or teammates around mm -hmm. him to compete for the, all the top spots. Obviously, back in the H2K, uh, H2K days, we did see him go all the way to the semifinal at Worlds. So we've definitely seen a star player and star carry from him. And I think we're seeing now what Oramne can do with better teammates around him once again. And I really like the fact that he also brings, I think, a lot more internal trust. Mm -hmm. Like, they really know, okay, this guy will deliver. If you put him weak side, he will handle himself. If you put him on a carry, he can actually take mm -hmm. over the lane. I think that's really important for the rest of the team as well. Oh, it left now. Could you bring the other graphic back? Because I did want Cato to talk about the compositions. That's why you were pointing to the screen. Yeah, I kept pointing ah, at the screen, it. but uh, there I'm we go. I'm new here, I don't know. You haven't been here no. in a while. So tell me what is going so right with these compositions by Ro, Cato. Well, they just have a huge team fight comp, right? On top of that, they have prior lanes. They have Kalista Lucian, which is two early game dominating lane champions. So you have two hard prior lanes. You have like this AD jungle, uh, AD mid, uh, AP jungle mix, which is really important. And this thing with priors across the board and such a good jungler, you can do whatever you want on the map. And as Fish she was saying, I think that if you look at Otto Amne, he's a consistent factor. And if you look at Finn last split, I think he had some counter picks and it was unsure whether he would win in those counter pick matchups. Sometimes he'd make mistakes or he wouldn't extend his lead properly. But you know, Otto Amne is something you can rely on, whether it's a tank or a carry. Let's look at the example from yesterday versus Fnatic, which by the way, was really crazy that any team would get this draft. <laughs> uh, it was pretty OP. Uh, talk to me about how Rogue enables their carries, uh, because it's not just about the top lane. Of course, it's all about what can you do for Larson and how can you let Han Sama shine? I just think this draft is completely illegal. Like, you get the strongest <laughs> mid in the game, the strongest AD carry, a global jungler which is basically banned throughout the whole of day one, counter pick support, and the strongest top. Like, this is your draft, and I think to enable your carries, this is what you need, basically. Globals, strong lanes, and huge team fights. All right, we have to go with Fischio. I'm sorry, no more last thoughts. SK have their work cut out for them here against Rogue, but we'll see if they can solve the puzzle. Thank you very much, Shox. We'll see if they can solve the puzzle indeed, because Rogue have looked incredibly strong over the last couple of days, Vedius. This edition of Odo Wamne seems to be working out very well for the team. Yes, I think that Odo yes. has, uh, for quite some time, quite Odo some time. has been a top-tier talent in the top lane. Oh, in the days of yore, when yes. League of Legends was just the Back in my ladder. day, when he was on H2K, oh, the glory days. Oh. Do you remember that World Semi-Final that he made? Ah, uh, we forget about 2016. Oh. 2016 Worlds <laughs> didn't exist as a European <laughs> fan. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to be jumping into Rogue versus SK. Rogue could be the first team in Europe to go 3-0. and zero. Let's see if that happens as we go to the music. I will say that's quite a dramatic drop. <laughs> like you go, bah, 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 bah. I don't know, I kind of like the funk, you know? Yeah. Lo-fi funk to draft and pick to. 
Podcasts. Yeah, anyway, as we boogie here on the caster desk, uh, we're going to be looking at some of these bands, Thresh and Callista. Uh, well, a very common bot lane for Han Summer specifically, going to be taken off the board. Of course, the Talia. Man, like, predicting bands aren't fun anymore because they're, they're all the same. Um, Pantheon, perhaps? Uh, perhaps a... Um, Olaf? Oh, shocker! <laughs> perhaps a... Uh, Olaf? Oh, oh, you're so good at this! King, wow! Um, I wonder if they'll pick Kaiser. Uh, hmm. Well, let's find out. Drum roll, please. Will it be the Kaiser priority? Or will we perhaps see... I don't like Renekton first pick, but they might do it. Um, we do know that it is considered a strong pick. It's going to be the Kaiser. Great job, Medic. I'm oh, just you. giving them other options. Yeah. Just giving other options. Um, now, Twisted Fate. Italy Renekton is open. Twisted Fate is also open. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you might want to try and deny that away from Larson after his fantastic performance yesterday. He really was... Uh, he, was, uh, he had the heart of the cards on his side, that's for sure. We'll remember that Blue, of course, played the Silas into Caps' Twisted Fate and actually had a really strong laning performance uh, for SK. So perhaps Blue thinks that he can play well into it. Doesn't need to pick it himself. And SK Gaming are deciding they don't need the Twisted Fate as of yet. Gragas and Graves, they're locks in, uh, locked in for the top lane and the jungle duo. Now, we could see a cannon come out later for Odo Omni, but he doesn't have to lock it in this early. I imagine that Odo's got quite a few champions up his sleeve. One thing that I do think has been played a little bit, I think over in the LPL more so than the LCK, is the Jace top. I think Jace yep. could actually be very good into the Gargs. I don't think we've seen it yet here in Europe, um, but I do know that Odo Omni was an OG Jace player. You know, when you think back to that 2016 uh, World yep. Semifinals run, it was Jace that he was really dominating some of those lanes on. So, could be a potential option for the side of Rogue. We'll have to wait and see. Instead, it's going to be the Nidalee. Uh, Nidalee, Twisted Fate. Pretty solid combo. You know, you land the stun, guarantee the spear, exactly. get great damage, and well, also have a lot of presence. Most of the time, you guarantee the spear. I did see a spear miss yesterday it's on a stun target. I'm not going to call out any names. Uh, but yeah, most of the time, you are guaranteed the stun. We have seen one Jace, by the way, Vedius, but it was in the mid lane. Vitality played it in ah, their yes, first yes, game against yes, Schalke. Uh, so we have yet to see a Jace in the top. But blue here, there's the Silas. Yep. Talked about it. Uh, into the Twisted Fate for last. So, SK, we expect this Gragas to be top, which means that they're still looking for their bot lane, which you would imagine Rogue will now look to ban away some of the big carries. Maybe something like an Ash could be taken off the boards. They could also look at the Aphelios. Maybe they don't want to have to deal with Samira. A lot of potential AD carries still up and available. But for SK, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of supports. Oh, okay, they're actually going to focus on top lane counter picks. Not another one. Of course, not big point of debate yep. pretty much throughout the entire esports scene right now. But uh, I know that Odo Omne is a big fan of the champion, and uh, I know for a fact that he's been playing a lot of it, so it's not really that surprising that SK want to take that one away from him. It has received some buffs over the last few patches, but uh, not any to his mini form, which tends to be where Nar really shines, if you can get a few buffs oh, to mini. MF. Okay, 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 okay. Um, normally, we don't see MF banned because normally, in terms of priority, she kind of falls much lower on the list. But I do understand the amount of lane dominance that she can bring, so not too surprising. Uh, will we see the Jin or will we see the Samira taken off the board from the side of her? It really depends what you want to uh, play into because uh, actually. Zaya! Wow. Okay, so what Zaya does have that neither Jin, well, Samira kind of has it with her blade well, but Jin doesn't have a way to escape a stun card that has been locked onto. Him, I mean, right? sure. I just. To me, this seems more like Rogue is saying, hey, we think that Jezu's more comfortable on these yeah. than necessarily some of the other more meta picks. So we would rather ban these away and then maybe perhaps a little bit more targeted towards Jezu. Um, either way, we'll have to wait and see what he does lock in. It's going to be the Leona. So he's actually saving his AD carry pick for last. Uh, which Unless is... it's Graves AD. Unless that's a joke. Graves. It's not Graves AD. It's <laughs> Graves' joke. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Either way. Yeah, we hoping. didn't talk about the, the Camille ban, because of course this now kind of pushes Odo Omni a little bit more into the direction of... I wouldn't mind seeing a Jace. I think Jace in Italy is a very strong poke comp. Of course, they wouldn't have a huge amount of crowd control on their composition if they do decide to go for the Jace. Ooh, Whoa, we're going to get the control. Rel. Okay, okay, very cool. I'm a big fan of Rel. 
I think that she's very strong in the early laning phase. Yeah. I think that she offers a huge amount of utility in lane and in mid-game skirmishes. I think the longer the game goes on, her value kind of falls off. I think it's harder for her to get strong engages later on into the game. Uh, and I also think that her job is to like stick to targets using her ultimate to, to kind of glue to them. And she kind of just gets nuked um, yeah. later on into the game. So. Yeah, I think that she can offer utility, but overall, the amount of crowd control on the side of Rogue's comp, not that high. They kind of got a bit of everything here on Rogue's comp. I feel like the one I'm seeing from SK so far, a little bit more well-rounded, slightly better scaling. I think there's a lot of responsibility on Rogue to actually find a lot of these picks, try and get ahead in the early game, and this is nothing new for them. They, they already showcased on day one that they're willing to really get in your face. The Ezreal is very surprising. I definitely think this is much more of a comfort pick yeah. because Ezreal is not seen really very much in the current meta. It seems to me that he has quite a few build paths. I've seen like Divine Sundra, I've seen Trinity Force, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but it seems to me that this is definitely a Jezu pick that he's going to be running into Hans Summers Kais. What surprises me more is often Kais has picked into Ezreal's because yeah, it, gives you you a, follow them. it gives you a free laning phase yeah. too. You're freely, you're allowed to scale up at one of the points that um, uh, you know, one of the weakest points is during the laning phase, but perhaps they're afraid of the rel and her ability to all in. But uh, either way, we'll have to wait and see. I think overall, in terms of SK's comp, it is quite well rounded. They do have great scaling, they have solid team fighting, they have a lot of utility. It's kind of like a traditional SK composition. Um, and yeah, we'll kind of we'll talk a little bit more about it as we get into game. But let's see if SK can challenge what seemed to be uh, an unstoppable rogue uh, in this first week of the LEC. No. Well, Betty, I know you were surprised by this Ezreal pick. Oh, wait, just in case Trimby does something cool here. Yep, I'm waiting. So he crashed down over the wall, which is the W when you dismount. You crash down. He did a flip, yeah, we know. He, yeah, he did, he did the flippy flip he over the flip. wall, and now he's looking for another flippy flip onto Treats. Oh, there we are, he mounts up. And, um... Nothing. Yeah, cool. Anyway, do you want to anyway. play a little game when we start this game? Okay. Okay. How much Ezreal do you think has been played in the major regions this split? Zero. Incorrect. Has Three. Incorrect. Am I close? You're, you're very <laughs> close. You're, you're closer with the first one than, than with the second. One? One game. Oh, wow. What do you think Ezreal's win, win rate is? Is it zero? It's 100% oh. Betty. It's undefeated. <laughs> it was played uh, by Red Force against Sandbox. 502 with uh, the Divine Sundra build that ah, you were talking about. Divine Sundra build. Okie yeah. dokie. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you honestly, could have gone anywhere I've, you just, I've just done so much prep, and Ezreal is just not one of those champions. So it's yeah. kind of. It's one of those games where I'm like, right, let's just wait and see what happens. Um, this 2v2 lane is definitely one that I'm not super familiar with, so I'm kind of excited for it. Already we have a bit of trading. Yeah, Trimby's going to jump in, looking for the knockup onto Treats. Uh, Treats can turn this one back around. He's also already used onto Trimby, and Trimby maybe overextended here already. He's gone down. Treats going to flash away. Hunt Summer jumping forward with the Akathia main will get the kill. However, Jezu's going to answer. Has that Conqueror procking up? And Hunt Summer, no flash know where to go. Jezu gets the first kill of the game for this Ezreal. So it turns out Ezreal's just broken. Yeah, I too mean, strong. Man. <laughs> uh, what a great start for SK's bot lane. Um, of course, for Jezu, he's been admiring Han Summer for a long time and to come into the LEC and immediately get a two kill start is uh, definitely going to be a big confidence boost for him. So this is just a great way for Leona to just soak up a lot of the damage. And I think this exhaust coming out clutch kind of kept the Trimmy locked up. That Q cooldown early on from Leona is so low. Six seconds. Yeah, which means that he got two stuns off and Jezu is just completely untargeted. Of course, Hansama had to commit his flash to getting that kill, which meant that Jezu had loads of time to just turn around, free hit onto him and uh, end up getting another kill. So great start once again for Jezu. Blue trading here onto Larson, who locks in a gold card, won't be able to connect onto the Silas with it. But as you say, like, treats his cooldown on the Q, six seconds. The cooldown on Trimpy's W, 11 seconds. Like, there's no way, unless you land the double knockoff to start, uh, knock up to start off that fight, that you're gonna win out. And you can see Jezu going for the exhaust instead of the heal on the Ezreal as well, definitely paid dividends for them in that fight. Yeah, because I was kind of thinking to myself that, uh, like, on paper, I actually think that the Ezreal Leona should actually win out on this 2v2 straight up. And, it, and it's cool to see very early on that, uh, when Leona gets to start off with a stun, it can heavily go in their favor. But 
A lot of summoners now gone. Trimby looking for the engage flash stun. A track repel is available. There's the double stun. No way out. Han Summer gets the kill. Inspired on the chase here as well. Looking for the kill underneath the tower. Can't quite get the damage down onto Treats and Tinks. Made his way down here, but decided to back away. Wow. Okay, so very quick response. Inspired coming down to try and turn things back around in the favor of Rogues 2 versus 2. And uh, let's have a very quick look back at how this one plays out. So Inspired does a clear from topside down towards bot. Trimby flashes in to get behind, gets the knockup, gets the flip, and is able to then land the two-man stun with which Han Sama is able to get the cleanup. Inspired does flash in here, a little bit over ambitious as they did not have any further utility to lock treats down. But, uh, excuse me, great stuff coming out from the side of Rogue. Tink spotted on a ward as he works his way up towards the top lane. I'm just having a quick look across the minimap to see if any action is likely to happen, because I realize some of our viewers might not be too experienced with Rel. So uh, like a quick basic rundown of what she's going to do in the lane might be helpful. You can see this little binding between her and Hans Summer. If she jumps forward or if she gets that binding between her and her opponent, she can break it and then stun people in an AOE around her. So that's what she did in that last fight. You could see Jezu and Treats. Oh, sorry, in the line around her, uh, in the line between them. So that's what she did to uh, Jezu and Treats. And that was why they were able to get that kill in the bottom lane. Yeah, she also kind of has a singe flip, right? When she's in the, the horse form. Uh, uh, it's, ju it's just a knock-up. It's just a knock-up. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, but uh, that, that's always the thing that confuses me because she has like a bunch of different utility when, depending on when she's on her horse or when she's not yeah. on her horse. Um, at All Stars, there was a Rel 1v1, <laughs> and it was the most boring 1v1 I have ever seen. I thought it would be like a cool jousting, like Knight's Tale reference. It wasn't. Uh, your abilities only really work when you're with a partner, so it wasn't fun. Would never recommend Rel in a 1v1 tournament for those interested in learning the champion. Really great for lane, though, as yeah. you've already seen. Very good at setting up for the jungler, and that can actually offer a lot of power. But especially in team fights later, not a lot of damage. Her responsibility is to just be obnoxious. Just get in your face, try and draw your attention, soak up as much damage as possible. And she is a very traditional tank uh, from what we typically see from her. You can see Inspired spending more time down towards this bottom lane, knowing that if Hansama and Trimby can get onto Jezu, they can start to get this Kaiser rolling, already 2-1 and one on the champion. Well, of course, they do have a stacked wave here, so this could be an opportunity for them to actually start off the Drake. You can see that Twisted Fate just turning 6 as well will have this push, and I think it makes a lot of sense for Inspired to just start this objective off. It's going to be very difficult for SK to be able to contest. And notice Odo Omni as well has the TP, is in a great position to be able to TP down as well. So the whole map state is perfectly set up for Rogue to be able to take these Drakes. And, of course, Rogue, one of our best early game teams when it comes to these early objectives. There's the TF ultimate. Looking for the damage down here onto Hans Summer. Blue trying to chase onto him, but Hans Summer just forced away. SK going to work their way up towards the dragon here as Rogue continues to do it, but it might have just been a TY for the leash here as SK using the destiny secure the Ocean Dragon. Very, very nice from Blue. Uh, you talked about how he did bring out this pick into the Twisted Fate yesterday against G2, and he, he stole Caps' ultimate a lot and, and was very proactive with yep. it. Didn't often get a huge amount off the back of it, but already he, in this early game he's able to actually get a pretty big lead there by securing that first drake so huge props to blue misses the stun yeah larson has kind of juked up a few times when that stun uh, the abscond abductors come out so i'm wondering if blue starts now repositioning where he is trying to chuck out those chains i think you can read larson's movements is that what he's telling me medic every time i've seen him miss it's because larson's juked up okay I'm going to be watching that now, Medic. This is the mind of a speedrunner, Medic. <laughs> you see these little micro interactions. Yeah. I have ascended. I'm, I, I'm not five head, I'm six. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, to me, it seems like the, what you're, you're saying is that you could land a stun onto Larson. No, no. Yeah. I'm not mechanically <laughs> I mean, you're just, good enough. I'm just saying you're implying that, do <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, Larson so, has <laughs> yet to die in the LEC, and I'm going to join so I can be the one that kills him, OK? <laughs> Well, we shall keep track of Larson uh, as the game <laughs> progresses, of course. Tinks is in the top side, but Odo Omni, that's too big of a wave, I think, to be able to actually make that play happen. But I think that Tinks just showing himself gives Gen X a little bit more security because now Odo Omni is a little bit more fearful to just blindly push that wave in. Good vision control up towards the top side of the map, though, but farm is just going to continue to come through. And while we do have a moment, I want to uh, 
Just say a very happy birthday to one of the players on the rift. It is Inspired's 19th birthday. He 19. Not, he's not 17 years old, Vedius. He is 19 years old. So happy birthday, Inspired. I was going to wait for him to get a kill, but he's taken way too long to do that. <laughs> so come on, Inspired. Get your butt in gear, get a kill, and we'll continue to congratulate you. See Larson dodging up towards the top side of the map, and Blue corrects and gets the, the uh, binding onto him. Larson now stunned up with the gold card as Blue flashes away from Inspired. So, Trade Flash is there, as uh, Inspired did, of course, commit that as well. Yep. Will generate a nice bit of pressure. Larson has the ultimate. Will he be looking for anything, though? Because we can see that the bot lanes have both moved up towards mid. Rift Held could be an objective that they can test for. Trimby level 4, Treats level 5, actually. Level 6 is hit by both AD carries. I feel like a brawl is about to begin, Medic. Get that play-by-play -play voice ready. Here we go. Larson with the gold card onto Treats. Jezu trying to put some damage down. Warfield's Warhammer in his inventory will help him out in some of these fights. The Rift Held goes down to 2,000 HP. Odoam the first one to move from the top lane, and I was hoping for a brawl at the moment. We have more of handbags at dawn as the True Shot Barrage goes wide. The eye popped. The Rift Held down. SK retreat. They say, okay, you can have the eye. And uh, Fedi, you promised me a brawl. Well, I kind of thought there would be one. Instead, SK just kind of looked at them. Yeah. Uh, Menacingly. Course, menacingly, yes, it was indeed quite menacing. Uh, Treats not being level six, didn't have that ultimate to really reliably start and engage off. But now Rogue have their eyes on the top lane. Just seeing that SK have actually decided to swap up towards the top side. Clearly, they want to have to catch this wave because it is building up. They're just mainly trying to match the Rogue duo, who I think for the time being will happily sit up towards the top side. But I wonder if they'll actually swap back with the Drake spawning in about a minute and a half. Typically having your bot lane around is a valuable asset, especially when both top laners do have their TPs up and available. Yeah, usually you can reset with about 45 seconds, uh, 30 seconds left before the dragon spawns to be able to get there on time. So it looks like for now, at least Rogue are gonna head up towards that top lane. But you can see Rogue have actually developed about a thousand gold lead 10 minutes into this game. And across the last couple of days, they've actually been our best early game team, Vedia. So a three and a half thousand gold lead at the 15 minute mark on average. Got 100% of first blood, 100% of first towers. Of course, they didn't get first blood in this game. So right. that one has now been broken. But Rogue are just consistently playing at a step above their opponents. They certainly have been. I think that expectations were very high on this team coming into the split, especially given that they finished first at the end of regular season yep. in summer of 2020. And uh, as you mentioned, already off to a great start. Getting that win against Fnatic yesterday, I think, was a was a very big deal when, when many would still consider Fnatic to be one of the top dogs here in Europe. To be able to get a win against them this early on in the split kind of sets you on a, an upwards trajectory. I think it was especially important for Trimby, who had a poor day one, to then have a very good Rakan performance yesterday, be willing to die for the team when required, and we've seen him already have a good laning phase on this rail alongside Han Summer. Inspired once again, Shadowing has the Rift Hold, can look to put this down if he so desires, but with 20 seconds on the Dragon, it looks like neither team is going to prioritize that for now. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I, I thought that we would already be moving towards that objective. It looks like the Rogue... No, apparently not. Um, a lot of resets now coming through. Perhaps these resets are your opportunity to go for it. Uh, I like the TP investment from Larson. Going to go back get himself the rocket belt, have that mythic item ready to go. Notice the TP difference between the two mid laners. So Rogue should just objectively be stronger at this point in the game. Dangerous trade for Blue. With the blue buff on, Larson locks the stun card. There's the spear from Inspired. Blue taking down and will get taken out. Trisha Barrage comes out though. And there goes Inspired as well. The jungler down in exchange for the mid laner. SK might use this as their opportunity to take the dragon. Okay, so I think that the trade from Blue was not the best, but the bot lane from SK was already on the rotation down because they expected Rogue to be committing to all this objective, and Rogue wanted to contest them. They felt strong enough and ready to go, yeah. and that means that with a great ultimate that came through from Treats in the mid lane, uh, they were able to actually get that objective in their favor. So props to SK for being able to get a pick back and Honestly, a very clear win condition towards these Drakes. Uh, I think that if they can maintain control and with the scaling that they've got going in their favor, Things are definitely looking good for them. So let's have a quick look back at this replay. This is going to be the middly Twisted Fate combo that uh, we were talking about in the draft. Quick stun into Spit. Very easy damage to come through. 
Uh, you can see that the Leo, uh, the Leona, the Rail rather, doesn't offer a huge amount of utility in a situation like this. Could have potentially dived onto the Ezreal, but once you're in, you're kind of in. Yeah. You don't have the best tools to be able to escape from that situation, but it seems that Rogue have found themselves another pick. Yeah, Blue really have no tools apart from stealing away the Cougar form and using the jump Blue. That was beautiful. Very clever thinking there from Blue. Able to get out of harm's way. That was a lot invested as well. It's it Ignite was. from Trimby, it's the Destiny coming out from Larson. But we should now see the Rift Herald being used in mid lane. Yeah, uh, a lot of things are kind of surprising me about Rogue in terms of their lane assignments and how things are, are kind of playing out. But this should be an objective going in the favor of Rogue. He should be able to lock this one down with no TP on blue. He's not going to be able to stop the siege from happening. And while Rogue may not be able to secure the tower right now, it is so very close to falling that uh, it's definitely a a big advantage game for Rogue. And one thing that these last few minutes have done is really snowball or accelerate Han Summer. He's a thousand gold ahead of Jezu. He's picked up four plates by himself, I believe, in this top lane. So that Kaisu is only getting stronger. And we've seen why she is such a priority pick. She is so powerful, just generally as an AD carry. She has mobility, she has extra mobility from the Gale Force, and then she's got the ability to dive onto the back line with that killer instinct. Expectations are that Hans Sama will be set up for success in this game. Oh, definitely. He's uh, very strong right now. Level 9 is an important thing to note as well. He's matching the level of his jungle. Of course, Trimby is suffering as a result because he's primarily been roaming around the map, trying to assist his team wherever he can. Uh, but yeah, with a lot of these core items starting to be completed, I expect Rogue to look to contest the third Drake of the game. Will be that mountain, of course. We haven't really seen any ults from Larson this game. Um, we saw that one on blue. Yes, we did, <laughs> um, I suppose. But I'm a little surprised because I kind of expected Rogue to be a little bit more proactive in the early game. I don't think that their scaling is terrible by any means. Um, but I think that when you kind of look at SK's comp, they just they have a lot of late game tools. And I think that Rogue's comp is not that straightforward to pull off or execute. You know, yep. I think they need to have a lot of things going right and positioning is going to be really important. And with the limited frontline that they have, kind of largely relying on Trimby, I think that... Uh, it's going to be tough. So, like, I'm a little bit more favoring SK's comp, especially given the state they're in, even though they are behind in gold. Um, I kind of prefer a little bit more, but we'll have to wait and see. Trimby flashes in. Will not be able to get that pick onto blue. We'll trade flash for flash once again. Going to be tower traded. Odo Omni, he knows that he's at a number disadvantage, but he's clearly saying that he can outplay this. The question is, will he be able to do it? Well, World Ender yet to be popped. He's stunned up, he's locked up, and that all was far too late. Treats takes the kill. Odo Omni unable to survive the 1v3. Yeah. Uh, not great from Odo Omni, but now let's see if Trimby... Oh, stun lands. Yes, stun card. Trimby's going to dive underneath the tower, but exhausted straight away. Larson's there as well. Trimby down to half HP. Teleport coming in from SK as they look to continue this fight. Genax stepping forward. Larson Destiny's out. Oh, Trimby. Oh, well, actually, you can jump over the wall. Yep. So he's able to get away. I thought for a moment that Larson had just been like, wait, we leave the rookies behind in these situations. <laughs> but Trimby is able to escape. So Genex did invest his TP to join the fight in mid lane. This will give a little bit more farm over to Tinks. And again, like, yes, it's a big gold lead for Rogue, but I still don't feel that SK is actually in that bad of a spot. Uh, I think that Blue is still farming up quite well. He still obviously hasn't completed his first item. And I'm not saying that this position is great for SK. If they were to just straight up fight 5v5 against Rogue, I, I don't think they'd be uh, in the best position. But I'm looking at Tinks. I see the levels that he has. He's getting strong. Jezu uh, working towards... Ooh, he has decided to go for the Sheen. Of course, can still build into both the Divine Sunderer and Trinity Force. Yep. We'll have to wait and see what direction he does go with that. I the, think... Sorry. I was just going to say, Drake spawning in about 30 yeah. seconds. That's one of the important things for SK is like, if they can get this dragon, you are putting Rogue on a timer because Mountain Soul with that extra shielding against the Nidalee, against the Kaiser, uh -oh. against the Twisted Face, so good. Odo Wamele does have Flash to try and get away and has the World Ender, so just pops that for the extra movement speed and will escape. Trimby working his way down through the river to try and get some vision on SK as Hun Summer and Inspired decide the turret is more important than the dragon itself. Blue almost down. Gale Force shoes from Hun Summer and the heal coming out from Inspired to top him up. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Larson is going for the turret. So Rogue have given up this dragon for two towers for more gold, but it does put them on a 22-minute clock. Yeah, they, they've actually just 
conceded most of the drakes this game, and they've instead focused on these objectives. They've opened up the map a lot more, and you can see how much vision control they have in the top side of the map. Like, if I just make the mini-map a little bit larger, you can see all these wards just littered throughout the uh, the mini-map, rather, or the, the top side jungle, and it's just great control. It's that trade of investment, right? Like, if SK is going to go for the drake, then we're going to go for top, and we're going to look for a pick. Jezu has been caught out. Killer Instinct comes. Ooh, that's a Ooh. nice... Oh, okay, I see oh, it, yeah. Oh. I see it, yeah. Spicy. Uh, so the reason we are making uh, <laughs> strange moaning noises is if you kill an instinct in with the attract repel on you, you can then break it as you get behind your opponent, stunning them as you land. That's yeah. a really nice little combo. Yeah, you could get a huge AOE team fight stun off of that. So that's that's very cool. That's the first time I've had the opportunity to see that. Looking forward to seeing it come out again in later fights. But Han Summer strong right now. Uh, that is two items completed: the Gale Force plus the Collector. Kind of like a, a strong core set for the Kaiser to work with. And uh, in these upcoming fights, will definitely look threatening. Now the Twisted Fate Ultimate will come through to give a little bit more information. He's just going to abandon Odo Omne, say good luck down in the ball lane. I'm going to go help my jungler who's currently doing the Rift Herald. The way that Larson has used the Destinies in this game, like at one or two have been offensive, but a lot of the time it reminds me of Rek'Sai's old ult. It's the farm alarm, right? Uh -huh. that everyone sees the eye above him and is like, oh, it's fine. Larson's just a lot going of to. people watching probably won't know that reference, by <laughs> the way. That's true. Well, <laughs> Blue is caught out here, steals away the killer instinct, but Hound Summer and Inspired are too darn strong. Inspired. So Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, finish, no, please. No, 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 I'm done. No, I apologize. I finished, right? Uh, <laughs> after you, after you. I thought you know. Uh, oh, I don't know. Ooh. Big mistake from Blue. <laughs> big mistake. Um, I think that you have to appreciate that your jungler's on the bot side of the map. Um, you know that Inspired is on the Rift Herald, and the fact that you're overstaying that far when you don't even have a tier two, it, it's just, it's not okay. Yep. So, um, yeah, he ends up getting punished. Um, he needs to be careful because. Like, the gold gap has just kind of ballooned to 7k. Yeah. And it's weird, because, like, as I've been watching this game, I've constantly been thinking to myself, like, SK aren't in that bad of a spot. But then I look at the items, and I'm like, no, they're in a really bad spot. <laughs> like, the item differential is just so huge. I don't think that Ezreal is a champion right now, whereas Hansama can 1v9 and has a two-level lead. So, like, Rogue have done... They've been able to build or balloon this gold lead, not by snowballing or by going for crazy kills, just through smart macro play, good laning, and like you can just see it in the CS as well. They've been able to build advantages across the board, and now they're going to get themselves another tier 2 tower 20 minutes into the game. I think the best way to describe it is that Trimby is closer in gold to everyone on SK than everyone on SK are to Han Summer and Lost. Han Summer and Larson are so far ahead in terms of gold, 3,000 ahead of their lane opponents. Whereas Trimby is only 2,000 behind anyone on SK. It's, uh, they're threatening the Nexus. The Nexus. Inhibitors. They're threatening the inhibitor towers. Um, and we're only hitting 20 minutes. Yep. They don't even have a Drake. They haven't even looked at Baron. Like, I I'm really impressed with how Rogue have been able to do it. Uh, just, just really good macro overall. This is the thing, right? You know I brought up their early game stats and they're 3,500 gold ahead at 15 minutes. True. They only have one kill and one assist at 15 minutes in the last two games. They don't they don't win through killing their opponents. Yep. They're just winning through outplaying their opponents and positioning really well on the map. And I think that when I think back to it, you know, I had a couple of question marks around some of their lane assignments, like why were they putting this player here? Why were they doing this? And it seems to me that their whole goal and investment was just funnel as much gold as possible onto Han Summer, you know? Yep. Make sure that we're not getting into a lot of these early skirmishes or early fights where we're potentially weaker or could throw the game. And so they just focused on making sure that their primary carries in Larson and Han Summer were just getting as much gold as possible. And Oduamne kind of took on the responsibility of playing weak side. And even in the weak side position, of course, uh, he did get the counter pick but he's been able to do very well in the one versus one and has been able to build up a huge cs lead so props to the individual players of rogue props to the strategy it's clearly all paid off of course trimby has been the one that's kind of fallen behind but yeah. then credit to him for like not getting picked off as often as he did on day one and showcasing why this whole rogue squad comes together because sk now they're on the back foot while they do have that sole point look at the mini map they, they just, the, the map does not belong to them. This bottom half of the jungle is in fully in Rogue's control. And thank you for highlighting the vision observers because you can see a lot of darkness for SK. The only thing they care about right now is making sure they have some eyesight onto that um, Baron. Rogue could actually sneak this, by the way. There's always the risk. With the Twisted Fate Ultimate, you can go up towards it. We saw Astralis do this in yep. the previous game. Or earlier game, rather. Of course, uh, you need Odoemon to get into the pit and clear away that control ward first before you're able to do that. SK now trying to push through mid, get that mid priority so that then 
Rogue have to deal with the minions. Blue steals away the destiny. Here we go. Pops it. Looking to see if SK can find an engage. Inspired continues to hit with the spears. Trimby standing off towards the side. SK stepping into darkness as they approach the river here. Treats and Tinks, the ones to lead the charge. Tinks, pseudo tanky, of course. He's got that grip built up. Treats, pretty tanky. He's playing Leona. And with the Eclipse, you get a huge amount of extra armor and magic with this. But SK realized they just can't approach. They can't do anything. Rogue will take the dragon, their first of the game, but it stops the sole point for SK. Wow. Very well played. And again, it was a situation. We talked about it already uh, in oh, the first okay. game of the day. He's fine. He should be fine. Um, sometimes when you see that five stack in mid, it's because they're contesting for that mid wave priority. Blue now has caught out Odo. I have a different de definition of fine to you. I think right he's now. fine. I mean, <laughs> okay, he might be fine. <laughs> I guess there's no grievous wounds yet on Blue, and Odo Omni just pops the world ender. And Blue really can't It just it makes me it. laugh because um, Silas's W gives you so much healing, yeah. right? So you dive in, you lose a bunch of health, and you get it all back. Oduwami just did the same thing, except he's like, go drinker! And then go. he's like, and you're like, okay, I'm backing off now, right? <laughs> you know? I, they both have equally absurd names, by the way. One's Kingslayer and one's Gore Drinker. Yeah, it's like, about epic, you know? It's like the fantasy. You know, again, you're not going to be calling these things like, you know, like, Puddle destroyer, like that's just not as intimidating. I mean, you know that I sounds mean? pretty scary. <laughs> you could totally destroy a puddle. You're you're dissipating a lot of water in that situation. Oh yes, like the sun of that. The, Think the... of the entropy. <laughs> <laughs> we are nerds. Uh, the fact that I laughed at that joke. Uh, anyway, uh, Drake is spawning in about three and a half minutes, so that objective is quite far away, which means the rogue's priority is setting up for this Baron. Good stun does land, and SK, they're just kind of being dragged around the map right now. Oduwame has the wave pushing in bot, so he's grouped up in mid to help push that wave. And Rogue have three pushing waves right now. They have so much vision control over the map, and like, SK just, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to answer. They have a TP on Gen X. He should kind of go bot. I mean, he doesn't have to go bot lane right now because the wave isn't an immediate threat, but it is starting to build up. Rogue have the right set on a fight in the mid lane, though. Odo has the flank. True shot barrage comes out. Larson looking for the stun lands on Tink, and Odo is in the perfect position. Kind of instant comes out. Inspired working against Treats here as the double kill comes for Hans Summer. Treats now the next target. Hans Summer's being knocked away, and Treats is down. It's Larson who secures the kill. Still unkilled on the twisted fate is Larson. And SK can't say that about themselves. They've lost four players and uh, Rogue will turn their eyes towards the Baron. An extremely one-sided fight that is dominated by Rogue. Well executed. They just use so much of their vision control and map pressure. SK just barely overextended in the mid lane, but it was just absolute domination. Very clean game of League coming out from the side of Rogue and showcasing why. They are one of the best teams in Europe right now. Let's have a look back at this fight. And so Oduamne comes from one flank, Rogue come from the other. Two SK members try to collapse onto Oduamne, but then Han, Sama, and Trimby immediately dive in. And while Blue does steal away the ultimate from Trimby, it does absolutely nothing. Jezu, he doesn't even get involved in this fight because all he can do is run away. The damage difference is just so huge and just a very well executed fight from Rogue overall. It's definitely great to watch Rogue in command of this game, 12,000 gold ahead. And it makes me a little bit sad, Vedius, because I just checked the schedule. Week four, day one is when Rogue play G2. It's a long way away. Yes, it is. But it does mean both teams' epicness can be built up before that point. Perhaps they'll both still be undefeated. Perhaps we will have a battle at the top of the table. Knowing G2, they'll probably lose a game I will. now and then. They're going to play Ivan Timo bot lane today. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, they play in the last game of the day against XL. And Rogue are trying to hurry us on their way there because although it feels like Rogue have been in control for the longest time, we are only 26 minutes into this game. Rogue actually holding one of the quickest times per game in the league right now. It's just so crazy to me how seamlessly Rogue just kind of controlled the game. You know, because I, I, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I felt like like I was thinking to myself, SK, they're not in a bad spot. And SK were probably thinking the same thing. You know, like, hey, we're probably a little bit behind, but it's not that bad. Um, but like Rogue just so kind of like effortlessly and almost like silently just very rapidly take over the game, build up these huge gold leads and they carry like, there's a three level difference between Han Sama and Jezu. Like there's a two level difference between the mid laners. It's just 
really clean, well-executed League of Legends and, and Rogue, they definitely do know how to close out a game. They've already taken the mid in here. They're threatening the bot tower. Larson is the target. Solar Flare doesn't quite connect. There's the barrel, knocks Larson back. He's going to try and escape. Here comes the Magnet Storm, and Trimby draws them all into the jaws of death. Blue diving onto Larson, trying to kill him for the first time in the LEC, and Larson dies! Reckless, the only one who is left unkilled so far this split. But Rogue will have their vengeance. Everyone from SK must fall, and so must the Nexus. Rogue undefeated in the Super Week. With silent perseverance, they will go 3-0 and on the week, and they have done it in dominant fashion. Please kill the Nexus, Rogue. Do it for Inspired. It's his birthday. What a gift for him, 3-0 and on the week. Very well played from Rogue. Very little to criticize outside of losing the two versus two at level one. I feel like that we did not see many mistakes coming out from this Rogue roster and huge props to them. This team has come into the first week of the LEC Spring 2021 season in commanding fashion. They really have and uh, SK, as you say, it didn't it looked okay for them for a long time, and then we, we looked at the score at 20 minutes, and it was a 7k gold lead for Rogue. And yeah, it just, six towers down, 7k just, gold lead. It just it exploded. Was, they like, had all of the Drakes in the early game. Yeah. It felt like that they're, you know, they, they were making good trades on the map, but like every time they gave up a Drake, Rogue was taking like I, just so much more map. You think of the third crazy. mountain, uh, the, the third Drake they took, that mountain Drake. They lost two towers in the top lane. They lost like. 30 CS That's in the true. bottom lane or something. It was just absolute domination from Rogue. Key player of the game votes are available for you. Larson, Hans, and Trimby. It's hard, man, because that was such a great team effort, I feel. You we know? had this on day one as well, where Rogue <laughs> won, and we were just like, we don't actually know who to give it to because everyone contributed to the win. So Stop. you guys vote for who you want. That's kind of the whole point of it. Uh, we shouldn't suggest it, but we're going to learn more about Rogue's win in a few minutes as they remain undefeated in the LEC. Consider it gear. It's an extension of who I am. It blurs the line between fantasy and reality. Sometimes I can't tell myself from my machine. I think that's by design.
everyone to the analyst desk where Rogue finished their week three and zero after another dominating win. And we are here for a closer look. Our first post game analysis segment of 2021. So you better believe it's going to be a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Rogue did really well. Yes, they did. Let's start by uh, picks and bends and how they did it. Beforehand, we highlighted how they do pick very well-rounded compositions to enable their carries. Kedrol, uh, what are their marks out of 10 for this one and, and how much did you like their comp? It's a solid 9 to a okay. 10 almost, I think. I mean, the thing is, on, they're on blue side and then they got a really good matchup top. They got a counter pick jungle. They got a mid lane, which yes, they did counter pick by the Silas, but the TF's always useful because you have the push and the ult ready. And then you had a winning bot matchup because Kai's outscales Ezreal. So I felt like Rogue's draft, even though they were blue side, they only really got counted on mid, which didn't hurt them at all. Mm -hmm. I like also how you put a lot of pressure on a young rookie to carry in Jesu. He has last pick in the draft. At this point, what on earth do you pick? Yeah, exactly. Like, True. You're already yeah. looking at TF Rel. You know Rel is insane in lane. You know she has so much CZ and engaged. Combine that with potential TF ulti. So he can't go for Jin or one of the very standard AD carries with all the bands as well. Zaya was banned away, which could have been an answer with the ulti, but he has to like dig deep. He needs something with mobility. He goes Ezreal. Great level one, which we did yep. get to see as well, but hard for him also then to carry the game. And this seems like a great example of what you were mentioning earlier in terms of Rogue having uh, a lot of champions. They know how to play really, really well in each lane, so they can always make a good composition. But it's not that they don't have enough. And if you ban a couple of them away, they can still form a good composition and even find bans to ban out, for instance, that young AD carry. Yeah, I think we have definitely learned throughout history now that Teams with a lot of good players tend to often get a lot of good drafts yeah. because they can play a lot of these things very yeah. well. It makes it look even better, right? And in the road case here, I think the last couple of days, they've shown that time and time again. That they have. Uh, talk to me about Rel. It's the first time we saw it here in the LEC. Kedwell, what does it bring to a lane? Well, I think Rel overall has really good setup with the ally. You know, when you get the E, you get the stack, you can get the double stun. You saw it works well with the Kaiser when she can like ult into someone and then get the chain link and get the stun when she ults in. But I think Trimpy went a bit too aggressive in the early stages. I think Rel, it was quite kind of weak. He jumped off his W here, as you'll see, and does proc the Aftershock. So I think he thinks here he can get the knock up. Maybe they can chunk out tre treats here with the Hate of Blade. But the Hail of Blades and the Aftershock mean it's a short trade. So as, lo as the right. trade progresses, they lose the Aftershock and they lose the Hail of Blades. Conqueror takes over. I mean, this was also still very strong level one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's remember that. Probably yeah. one of the strongest AD carries there. So maybe a little over aggressive. This was probably the first time they were too aggressive on the rogue side, but they then follow up with a really nice gank. So he mounts up, then he gets a little flip back. That's the first time CC can connect. Then he gets the stun right after, as soon yep. as like, the flip is, is over. And it's just really hard to escape from when the rel has flash. This is what you can do, and you need to abuse this because her strength is the early game. It is the laning phase. She's a lot harder to play later on in, mm -hmm. in team fights when people can also burst it down. Yeah, I think that was the only mistake Trimmy made there was the level one. And I think if you're playing Halo Blades and you're going for the Aftershock engage yourself, the re-engage comes in with Conquer and Ezreal level one. Yeah, they ended up losing the trade. Ezreal only really got one kill, but the whole point of that play was they didn't lose out too much because Ezreal didn't actually base. The Kaiser died, picked up a longsword, came back to lane. So when they came back to the lanes and it was like a, a, an advantage for SK, it was actually an advantage for Rogue because yep. SK didn't get the base off. Exactly. Uh, great play there from Rogue in that regard. And I think when we make the report card up of Trimmy in his first weekend, I I would say solid performance also bringing out kind of another pick to the rotation yesterday a great game on the Rakan yes a shaky start on day one but overall showing a lot of promise very aggressive I'll give him that very aggressive uh, we like all that. three <laughs> games he's had a few engages where you're like whoa okay what's happening like 10% uh, HP engage yesterday on Rakan where he just got popped instantly but I love the fact he's going for this kind of stuff and I think coming in as a rookie on this kind of team who's so controlled so much discipline he must love it. And I love yeah. the fact they trust him to play aggressive, engaged champions every single time this week. Yeah, that's a fantastic development. Let's look a little bit more holistically at the game and kind of the decisions made on either side. In the case of Rogue, they just let SK have all the dragons, in fact, yeah. to focus their attention on the top side of the map. What did you think of the way they played the game and got their gold advantage? I mean, if you look at their game today and you look at the game versus XL, you can see they gave up the almost Dragon Soul point to XL as well. XL was on Dragon Soul point. Uh, SK was on Dragon Soul point. They're just ignoring dragons. Basically, if you look at the map state and how they're playing, they're using the TF to hover top side, and Hans is actually split pushing in a 1 3 1 top, getting all the plates, all the gold. The only objective that I think Rogue contests is Heralds, just so they can force towers faster. Mid tower so, as well. Exactly. Amazing, yeah. And you can see SK using all their tempo to get the dragon while they're taking plates. And then when one of them bases to catch top, they just get three man dove, which you saw happen to blue. And then eventually they did try to dive over to Amni on a cross map, but they were just way too far behind and they started losing tier twos for that. So I think. Uh, Rogue was just ahead on every play and they were just sacrificing all of these dragons just for gold and you could see it from the, the whole game basically. 
I just love how good Rogue are at saying, you know what, we don't need to play a messy early game. We don't have to take all the fights you're trying to force on us. We don't need to use TF ulti to go f aggressive plays and side lanes to try and snowball. They're trying to like make the game less volatile because that only benefits them. They have great scaling on their side. They know they can play the map better. And that's also why they just give up drakes. They started the first drake, Rogue war um, SK walked in, they're like, we don't need to fight this. They walk away. And they just reset all the time instead of taking stupid fights. And that was the key point, right? They outscale. The Kaiser always outscales the Ezreal. So if you just put all the gold onto hands, give him all the turret plates, give him the kills when they go for these side lane dives while giving up Drakes, when it comes to that fourth Dragon Soul point and you're 7k gold up, it's pretty unlosable. Do you feel like it's a kind of an evolution of the play we saw of Rogue also last year? I know they have a couple of different members, of course, now. But I, to me, Rogue was always a team that in best of ones could play this style very well, where they had a well-rounded composition. They know what the game plan was. But but a criticism they often got was that they were playing maybe too slow even. It seems different to me now. It seems proactive and just careful when they have to be, but knowing when to pull the trigger as well. And it doesn't feel like they're laying back as much. They're just controlling it. I think it was only a criticism if you were like G2. And you, right. could, and you could look at Rogue and say, okay, we can punish that. We can beat you it's here. Not bad. Everyone else still found it really difficult to play against them in regular season. Regular season, they did win it. And the team is built around Larson and what he wants to do. And he is the kind of player who does not want con constant scrappy fights. Like he's playing super safe in his own laning phase, getting far ahead on CS, not taking stupid trades or anything. So the team kind of reflects the way he wants to play the game, which I think is really nice. And I think it's, go it's going to be the same story. G2 will sit there and say, you know what, we can beat Rogue here, we can punish them. We have to see it first, obviously. And there's also a different story going into best of fives, where typically you do need to bring slightly more, maybe different styles depending on the meta. In this case for Rogue, I think they're more flexible than last year, only a benefit. They definitely look stronger. Oh, what a fantastic first weekend for them so far. Also, the Kia player of the game, Hans Sama, with 60% of the vote. Congratulations there to uh, Hans, who is really going to be able to shine on this lineup. And I'm very excited to see how it develops. You said it as well, now that the carries are enabled. But um, Larson, he died, so... Called it, by die. the way. Called it? He called oh, yeah, it in the yeah, early yes. game. He called said in the first right. few minutes he died. Doesn't matter. In better check, the question was, who dies first, Reckless or Larson? Well, Larson was playing first before Reckless. So. That's why True. I put him. Oh, good bad. choice. No. But I think this rogue is slow in a way, but I think they're controlled. They're so controlled, and you can see shades of G2 in them, right? They know how each, each other's champions work to their limits. They know what fights to take, what fights not to take, and they know how to play around the gold so well. Did you just say controlled and G2 in the same sentence? Well, they're a controlled version of G2. Oh, okay, got it, got it. There you go. I thought you were saying, ah, G2 play as controlled as I'm like, no, 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 no. no. There's just, I just think there's signs of G2 in them where, you know, we were talking about backstage about I, how I G2. I you off. I'm sorry. Okay. The next That's game fine. is ready. That's I'm fine. so we sorry, Katie. Yeah, you guys go ahead. Uh, anyway. We've seen flashes of brilliance from both Misfits and the Medline so far, setting the stage for an action packed game three in a few minutes.